Let me recap. Time is a motion. The proof is simple. If your timepiece stops moving, it doesn't work. Time is a constant quantity of motion. The proof is simple. If your timepiece speeds up or slows down, then it doesn't keep time correctly. When you use any traditional definition of time, like a year, a month, a day, an hour, a minute, a solar second, or an atomic second, since the timepiece itself can be moving, then you must use relativity to correct for the error of having a moving clock. However, when you measure motions as fractions of the speed of light, then you do not need relativity. Ponder this. Any photon of light can act as your clock because they all have the same motion. Now, at this moment, some people are thinking, wait a minute, I thought light can be slowed. Let me emphasize, photons of light cannot be slowed. Recently, some scientists talk about experiments where they say, we have slowed light to a crawl. That is misleading at best. That is a lie at worst. It is false. What they have really done is only to make the individual photons of light travel further by forcing the photons to interact with the electrons in some substance. When the photons interact with electrons, the photons of light wrap around the electrons. This takes time because it takes some distance. Then the photons unwrap from around the electron. This takes more time because it takes more distance. Because of this interaction with the electron, the photon travels further, not slower. Every photon of light always travels at the speed of light. For example, when light bends as it passes through water, this is an example of light interacting with the electrons in the water. When the light is bent as it goes around a massive body like a star, the photon is traveling further, not slower. When a photon interacts with a mirror, the photons do not simply bounce off the mirror and instantly change direction. The photons interact with the electrons in the mirror. The photons travel farther. You will never see a photon gliding past you with some slow motion. To summarize, every photon of light has the same motion. The motion of the photon, the motion we now call the speed of light, should be our standard of motion. That motion should be renamed time. Now, by definition, the speed of light and time are the same thing. In my life, I've made many mistakes. I've been wrong many times. However, there's absolutely no way I'm wrong about this. Whatever is nature's fastest motion should be our standard of motion. Whatever is nature's fastest motion should be called time. The logic behind this is infallible. There's no doubt about it. And this is a fundamental breakthrough in physics. This is a big deal. It is life-changing. If this seems hard, it is not. The key to understanding time is understanding fractions. The key to unifying physics is understanding fractions. I understand this is a head shaker. <laughs> this should have been easy. However, for about a hundred years now, physicists have been stuck because of this. This is all about adding fractions. For a moment, let us suspend time about physics and venture into pure mathematics. Imagine adding two fractions. For example, imagine adding one third and one fourth. At least for the moment, this is pure mathematics. I'm not talking about adding two lengths. I'm not talking about adding two motions. All I'm talking about is adding two numbers. Now, a problem exists. Obviously, the three does not equal the four. Like 
this. These two fractions can't be added directly. The two fractions do not have common denominators. To add these two fractions correctly, you must change the fractions so they have one common denominator. In this case, the least common denominator is twelfths. You could change the fractions to four twelfths and three twelfths. Now, these two numbers have common denominators. Now you can add them and get the number seven twelfths. Remember, with the way physics is now taught, velocity measurements are fractions. When you add two velocity measurements, it might seem that your denominators are equal, while actually they are not. If you use seconds, minutes, hours, or any other traditional units of time, in other words, if your motion for time is less than the speed of light, then your denominators may not be equal. If you are using two or more traditional clocks, and these clocks are moving at different speeds, then your denominators definitely are not equal. The denominators of two velocity measurements are not equal and cannot be correctly added together unless all of your clocks have the same motion. When the two clocks move at different motions, then something must be done to correct for the error, to correct for the mistake. Something must be done to equate the denominators. Logically, there are only two possible ways of doing this. Einstein's method is one way. My method is the other way. The Lorentz factor, or Einstein's correction factor, makes the fractions have common denominators. It is a mathematical trick that slows one of the clock's motion to the other's motion. Typically, the clock that is moving with respect to the Earth's surface is slowed back to the motion of a clock at rest on Earth's surface. Unfortunately, this treats the Earth's surface as a preferential reference frame, as if it is at rest in space. Obviously, it is not. There is no doubt Earth is moving faster than the Sun. There is no doubt the center of the Milky Way is moving slower than Earth. There is no doubt about it. There are motions that are moving slower than the motion of Earth's surface. Just remember, there is a second way of equating these denominators. Using the speed of light instead of relativity also makes these fractions have common denominators. Adding fractions correctly has been a huge problem in physics. Just remember, it is okay to add two fractions of the speed of light without using relativity. The only rule is this. You just can't add two fractions that yield a number greater than the speed of light. That would be improper. Keep in mind, this is a new type of physics. This is non-Einsteinian physics. You can't say it is right or wrong just because it's based upon a different beginning definition for time. Here is an interesting thought. This new physics cannot be wrong if Einstein's special theory of relativity is right. Or in other words, if Einstein's special theory of relativity is right, then this new physics must also be right. Einstein used a definition for time that speeds up and slows down. I just used the fastest motion. If you are comfortable with the idea of the limit in calculus, then essentially this new physics is simply a special case within special relativity. It is the limit of Einstein's special relativity. It is a special case where time has been sped all of the way up to the speed of light. As history has shown us, time could be defined to be any motion. If we use the fastest motion, then we have reached the limit. This is simply a special case. Again, Einstein used a definition for time that speeds up and slows down. Yes, this makes sense when time is defined as some motion that is not the fastest motion. Instead of using any motion in the range of possible motions, in the range of motions that fall between the slowest and the fastest, I simply define time 
to be the fastest motion. This creates a new, unique type of physics. The physicists out there will be thinking, that sounds good, that sounds plausible, however, I see a big problem. I know what many of you are thinking. I thought of the big problem too. Essentially, the speed of light definition of time is equivalent to Einstein's special theory of relativity. It is an alternative to special relativity. When I first thought about this, I thought I needed something else, something that was equivalent to his general theory of relativity. Later, I discovered I didn't need to come up with anything. Someone else had already done it. The physicists back in Einstein's time were very smart. Following a different path than the one I traveled, they almost made it to the center of the physics labyrinth first, before everyone else about 100 years ago. They were this close to unifying physics. However, they had a huge problem. Einstein. Einstein's ideas so overwhelmed the other ideas in physics at the time Many of the great ideas of other scientists were simply overlooked. Just when the other scientists almost had it all figured out. Because of Einstein's work, these other physicists were told they were going down the wrong path. At just the moment when these physicists had almost won, that is, at unifying physics, they were duped into thinking they had lost. These scientists had no chance at getting their grand unification ideas accepted. Key work simply stopped. Some ideas were practically lost to history. I will tell you about two of these scientists in a couple of minutes.